profiteers, Kevin McCormick here for Fine Flip Profit. I appreciate you tuning into this video. Want to talk to you a day a little bit about using your network, networking, to expand your inventory and increase your profitability with your eBay inventory. Now, I know that uh, there's a lot of people in the reseller universe that talk about the traditional forms of getting inventory for your operation. Thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales, and even things in your own basement. But one of the things that I want to talk about is using your network to get access to inventory that normally you would not get access to until it went through perhaps an estate sale or maybe a garage sale. What I'm talking about is using your network, leveraging the people that you know so that you can get access to inventory. How do you do that? Well, first off, you may know a lot of people, but those a lot of people may not know anything about you. They may not know that you're an eBay reseller. They may not know that you like to acquire inventory for resale purposes. What I found in my experience is that when I let folks know that I'm a reseller, people are actually, number one, they're intrigued by that. They're like, oh, how does that work? And I explain the process to them. And number two, none of them have ever expressed any misgivings or hesitation about sharing inventory with me, potential inventory that I might be interested in because they know that I'm going to resell it. And so I go in and I try to offer fair prices, but I try to offer prices that I know that I can make a profit on, a fair profit as well. I'll give you an example. I have an acquaintance who lives in an apartment complex who knew that I was an eBay reseller because she had come to a class that I gave for folks on how to be a reseller or the life of a reseller. She had someone who lived in her apartment complex whose mother just died and this person had to go through their parents' stuff and they wanted to get rid of some of it. They had thought about eBay but did not understand how the eBay process worked. She knew that I was a reseller so she put me in contact with that person. Once I got together with that person and was able to inventory to see what they had for sale, these are some of the great things that, came, that I got from them as a result of that chance meeting with my friend. So the first thing that I want to show you is this. If you can see this, this is a red leather coat. Now it's really long so it's going to be hard to show you on camera exactly how long this coat is, but I will tell you that this is a real leather coat. Yes, the color is red. You might be able to see it a little bit closer that way there. The color is red, but it has a very nice fox fur collar that goes around the top edge of the coat. It's about 54, 55 inches long. It has a belt and it's made for women. It's made by a designer called Greg Bell and the size is a medium. Let me show you another item that I got from this person. This is a coat, a heavy leather suede coat that has really heavy fur around the edges and it also has a hood that also has the heavy fur. This is a suede leather coat like I just mentioned. This was another item that I got from this person. Very heavy weight, very good for cold weather. This is a lady size medium. This belonged to this person's mother. Um, she liked coats apparently because this is another nice coat. This was a very nice find here. And let me show you the third thing that I was able to get from this person. Now this item here was not from his mother's inventory. This is from his personal inventory. This is a black leather jacket. It's in the bomber biker style, if you will, about waist length, a little bit longer than waist length. It has very heavy weight zippers on it. It has a lot of different pockets and things that have zippers on them. And it's very high quality, 100% leather. The unique thing about this is a couple of things. One, it was hardly worn. He got this from a girl that was supposed to be his girlfriend. It didn't work out. He had no desire to keep the gift, even though she had given it to him a while ago. He decided that he wanted to just get rid of it. That's the first thing. The second thing is that this is a size 5X. I don't know if you can see that on film, but this is a size 5X jacket. He was a very large man. So this 5X jacket, being that it's 100% leather and that it's brand new, is a really nice, unique item. So that was the third thing. So you ask, you might be asking, what price did you pay for these three items? The price that I paid for all three items was $40 for all three. And this person was extremely happy to get that. 
I would have been willing to negotiate up to some degree. I don't know what my final number would have been, but I thought that $40 was my opening bid and he accepted it right off the bat and we went on from there. So basically each one of these items cost me $13.33 per item. The red coat that I showed you, I currently have listed on eBay for $150. I expect to get no less than $125 for the coat based upon my research, similar coats that have sold on eBay recently, um, the condition of it compared to other coats and the condition of those coats, and just my gut instinct. The second coat that I showed you with the hood that was the suede leather, I have that listed on eBay for $125. I expect to get no less than about $90 for that coat as well for all the same reasons based upon my research, based upon similar coats, based upon the brand, all of the different things go into making that type of pricing decision and thirdly the black leather jacket I have listed on eBay for $100 that I expect to get no less than $75 for all of those items that I have listed on eBay have offers uh, have the ability for buyers to place offers um, for those items, which is something that we talked about in an earlier video. So I'm open to negotiation with potential buyers if they want to throw out an offer to me. But I have price floors in my mind of kind of what I would like for those things to sell for, what I think they can sell for based upon finding the right customer and that type of thing. So we'll see how it goes. I'll update, update you in a future video as to how the sales of these three specific items go. But what I really want to focus on is the networking aspect. If folks don't know that you're a reseller, they don't have the ability to refer you to other people who could use your services or who might be interested in selling you some things before they either give it to the thrift store, sell it at a garage sale next summer, or call in an estate sale company to liquidate the entire household. Now, nothing wrong with estate sale companies. I buy a lot of things from estate sales, but think about this. We got this inventory before this person may decide to employ an estate sale company to liquidate everything. That's not what I do. That's not the niche that I, that I perform in. So I have no interest in being an estate sale company. That's a lot of work. Folks that do that, they love it and God bless them for doing it. Had these shown up at an estate sale, I guarantee you I would have paid a lot more than $13.33 per coat in order to access this inventory. So using your network allows you to get access to inventory that maybe you wouldn't have gotten access to otherwise. That allows you to buy the inventory at a price that works for you, essentially cutting out the middleman, that being the estate sale company, or the middleman process, if you will, that being a garage sale, and it allows you to get the inventory firsthand at a price that works for you. So make sure that you let people know that you're a reseller. Talk to them about what the life of a reseller is about. I gave a class about reselling items to a group of people and that's how this whole process started. My friend attended that class. She remembered that I was a reseller. She put me in contact with this person whose mother had died and he had this inventory and the ball went forward from there. So remember to let folks in your circle know that you're a reseller. Be proud of being a reseller. Leverage your network in order to to get access to unique pieces of inventory, to expand your inventory footprint if you're specializing in a certain niche, or, and, not or, but and, to increase your profitability either way, because you should be able to get the items at a much better price than if you, if those items ended up at a thrift store, or ended up at an estate sale, or even at a garage sale. So use your network to expand your inventory. I hope that you find this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you give a thumbs up to let us know that you like the video. We greatly appreciate that. I look, look forward to sharing other video tidbits with you of the life of a reseller. But until we meet next time, keep finding those items, keep flipping those items, and keep profiting from those items. We'll see you next time on Find Flip Profit.